Please welcome Woo! Philly Plowden. Come on, Sarasota, clap your damn hands. Clap, damn it. Pop up, you better clap your damn hands. The hell wrong with you? I'm up here trying to do a special pop up. Clap your damn hands. Man, my career is looking up. I'm in Sarasota, Florida. Everybody talks about, oh man, the best audiences are in New York. Oh man, the best audiences are in LA. No, the best audiences is in Sarasota, Florida, okay? Yes. Because one of the things that make y'all great, I can do the show here, and some of y'all so damn old, you'll forget, and I can come back and do the same show. And they go, like, that was great. Now, before I start, let me tell you right off the top, okay? If you are easily offended, this is not the show for you, okay? Because I'm going to say whatever the hell I want to say, okay? I'm so sick of everybody getting canceled. Oh, my God, he hurt my feelings. You can't say nothing anymore. Oh, my God, he said something racist. Everybody in here has said something racist at some point in time, okay? But every racist statement does not come from a hateful place. All right, you driving down the street and the Asian guy cut you off. You gonna be like, okay, Mr. Wong. <laughs> if you can open your damn eyes wide enough, you can see the damn road. <laughs> and if I'm driving and I cut off Mr. Wong, he'll be like, okay, you're Mr. Blocker man. <laughs> you stop smoking so much weed, you can see road. <laughs> you know what's on my bucket list? I want to make love to an Asian girl. I've never made love to an Asian. Look, all the veterans in here going, I've been there. But I'm talking about. <laughs> I just want to make love and say I have a good night making love. I just want to see an Asian girl go, oh. <laughs> My ego will be fulfilled. I'm going to start the show in a minute. I don't understand the world no more. I, I talk about everybody, I don't give a damn. And see, you can't cancel me, because I'm telling you right now, I really don't give a damn if y'all laugh or not. I've already been paid, so I don't give a damn. <laughs> I'm just sick of the world. People get on my damn, you know who's getting on my nerves? And, I, and I'm gonna say it, and they can get mad. I don't care, you can't take nothing I have, because I ain't got that much, okay? But I, 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 I support you, I don't care. I, I want you to do the best you can, I support you. But gay people are getting on my damn nerves, okay? You're getting on my nerves. And I'm gonna tell you why. I'm in a um, clothing store, Neiman Marcus, and I'm looking at some stuff, and I hear this voice behind me like, can I help you? And I turn around, this dude, he's a dude, he got long ass hair, he got blush on, he got the makeup on, and lipstick, and big ass fake titties, and I'm looking at him, now he gets an attitude with me, cause he's like, is there a problem? I'm like, don't get no damn attitude with me, I don't know what the hell you are right now. Help me figure out what the hell I'm looking at right now. <laughs> I live in Atlanta, right? It's a big gay community in Atlanta, and a lot of lesbians. And if your goal is to look like a man, don't get mad at me if I call you dude. <laughs> right, I'm in another store, and I said, hey, my man. She's like, I'm not a man, I'm a woman. I'm like, bitch, you got a bigger goatee than me. Atlanta's crazy, man. I love living there, and I knew it's like, it's like a big gay population in Atlanta and everything, and I don't care nothing about nobody like that. That's your lane in life, that's your lane in life. This is my lane over here. I love my lane. I don't know what's in your lane, but I know I got ass and titties in my lane. I love my lane. Now, here you got ass in your lane. That's none of my damn business. But the ass in my lane is connected to a JJ, okay? So I love my lane. But the thing that surprised me was the type of black gay males they have in Atlanta. I'm thinking they're going to be like metrosexual, cool clothes, cool car. No. The dude that hit on me was a thug, okay? He had the tattoos on his face. He had the dreadlocks. He had the gold teeth, white beetle on, pants sagging down, Timberlands. And I saw this dude coming at me. I was scared as hell. I'm like, is this dude going to rob my ass? Or is this dude going to rob my ass? Because you don't want to lose your virginity to Master P. That's all I'm saying. Because he be like, make it go, oh. Uh. He be like, nah, 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 nah. I'm going to start the show in a minute. Take my damn time. This lady's looking at me like her TV's stuck on BET. She can't turn the channel. She... 
son of a bitch is everywhere. <laughs> She's paying attention like it's gonna be a test. I'm like, oh. this guy's sitting here with his nuts open. Thank you very much. I didn't think I'd see some gray balls tonight, but good to see that. Who y'all married right here? You guys, are, you two right here? How long you guys been together? 33 years, damn. Y'all still long? Yeah? When's the last time you did it? Who was president? <laughs> did he have anything in common with me? Was he orange? Or was he old as hell? <laughs> Is it me or is Joe Biden the oldest damn man in the world? Is he oldest? <laughs> Did you see the thing where he went to shake somebody's hand after a speech and nobody was there? You know whose hand he thought he was shaking? Roosevelt. <laughs> the whole government's old as hell. Chuck Grassley in his 80s. Chuck Schumer in his 80s. Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, she in her 80s. Speaker of the House, you 80-something years old, you Speaker of the House, you don't even let somebody 80 years old speak in your damn house. <laughs> I'm gonna start the show. Take my damn time. You know, this is, you know, it's a half an hour special, so I gotta, you know, do all my half an hour special stuff. I don't care. I see I brought out a lot of black people. I know they had a, a flyer. Yeah, you looking for them too, right? <laughs> He's like, where, where the hell? What you talking about? There ain't no black people here. This is after five o'clock. They back on the other side of the tracks. What the... <laughs> Every time I come to Sarasota, I'm like, where's the black neighborhood? It's like, we ain't got one. We... It's called Tampa, it's called Tampa. Where's the black neighborhood here? Bradenton. Where, uh, Bradenton? Bradenton? What? That's, that's, they got a black area in Bradenton? And where do you live? Bradenton. You live in Bradenton? Oh, oh, okay. That's why he's so used to me, because he got neighbors. He... No, no, you don't scare me, Mr. Negro. I'm with you. I, I have a lot of African Americans around me, buddy. And you don't scare me at all. I speak fluent Negroese. <laughs> but then I just thought about how you said it. I said, where the black people live? You said, Bradenton. And I said, where you live? Bradenton. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna start the show. <laughs> Take my damn time. I moved to Atlanta, you know, for my acting career, because I'm an actor and everything. And I've been to some cool stuff. Like, you know, I was in um, NCIS New Orleans, you know? But don't get excited, because I was killed before the opening credits. <laughs> I told all my friends, don't come in at 9.02, because my ass will be dead. Come in at like 8.59. And I had like a real dramatic scene and everything, and I had to die like, Johnny, remember the word. <laughs> That's how I died like a little girl. <laughs> Right? And then here was the thing, right? I had a scene where I had to be on a morgue table and, um, my, and with my shirt off and everything, and they had to make it look like rigor mortis set in, so they had to put body makeup on me. Now here's the thing, I didn't know, when you get body makeup applied to your body, they give you pantyhose type material to put on your information. This is like little, you know, the information and everything. But here was the problem, the girls that were doing my body makeup were freaking hot, okay? Just big ass titties and ass and they were walking around and one girl bent down and I saw a thong and another girl bent down and I saw a nipple and I'm trying to think of dead puppies because I don't want my information to become informative. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then another show I was on, I was on on Watchmen. 
on HBO, Watchmen, and I had a scene with Regina King, okay? And it was a real cool show and a real cool scene and everything, and I had a scene with Regina King, and between takes, Regina King and I were just talking like normal people, and she was so cool. We were just rapping and talking about, you know, family and business and blah, blah, blah. She was so damn cool, I forgot she's like a TV icon. A, a Academy Award winning actress, right? I forgot and I asked her out. <laughs> so when security was taking me off the set, <laughs> they didn't hurt me. One of the best acting jobs I ever had, really wasn't an acting job, it was a modeling job. And um, I was a hand model. And they paid me $1,500 to hold a Coke can at the Charlotte National Speedway. $1,500. But they said, first you gotta go get a manicure, right? Go get a manicure. So I went to get a manicure. Now you probably know this, I didn't know this. I went to a little Asian lady to get a manicure. I didn't know they don't speak English, right? So I'm talking trash, because I always talk trash. I was, yeah, I'm a, I'm a hand model now. She's like, uh huh. <laughs> yes, I'm going to hold a Coke can at the Charlotte National Speedway. I'm a hand model. Right, so now I pick up, she don't know what the hell I'm talking about, right? So now I just said something real crazy, I'm like, yeah, green basketball came out my ass. She's like, ah ha! <laughs> so it was what they call a cleanup, it's only 10 bucks or whatever. So I put the $10 down, I'm walking out. All of a sudden now, she speaks perfect English. Hey, where you go? Where you go? You only need me $10. Yes, all you're gonna need me is $10. And I'm like this, ah ha! <laughs> $1,500 to hold a Coke can. That was the best hand job I've ever had in my life. <laughs> All right, your hair looks good. You look good. Okay, she was fixing her hair. I, I have that, I can't, I see something and I gotta talk about it, so just, you, you look great. It's a cool looking couple right here. This lady and this gentleman right here, y'all look cool. That's you with her? But why she look better with him? <laughs> what y'all, what y'all, y'all? <laughs> <Y 'all, laughs> is that what y'all do down here? Isn't that what rich white people do? Hey, come on, bring your wife's titties. <laughs> no? Now who's who now? That's your husband. Oh, those are brothers. Who are you? Who are you with? Yeah, y'all doing some freaky stuff. Okay, y'all brothers, and y'all two, sis like sister sisters? Sister-in-law. Oh, I don't get no damn attitude. I don't know what the hell going on in your family. She can laugh at sister-in-law! I'm just messing with you. I have no black women here to pick on, so. Any black women here? Where, 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 where? White people surprised as hell. What? I love black women, man. That's my thing, black women. You know. Here's the thing, when you date a black woman, you don't know if you can wake up normal the next day or with a number two pencil stuck in your neck. <laughs> Just based on something she think you might have been dreaming about. And black women got this new thing. Whenever a black woman makes a point in the conversation, she always emphasizes the point by going, boom! That's a black woman thing, right? Yeah. I was talking to my girlfriend, Sherelle, and I told Sherelle, do not go out with Malik, okay? But the bitch went out with him anyway, and now she got herpes. Boom! <laughs> Caucasian women, y'all tried it, y'all just don't have that flair. It's like, oh my God, I was talking to Kathy, and I told her to leave Cody alone because he's a whore, and she did it anyway, and now she has HIV. So I gotta do some pandemic material. Yeah. The pandemic didn't mess with Florida. Y'all did not give a damn about the pandemic. Y'all were walking around. Y'all were walking around licking elevator buttons. Licking gas pumps. Ah, come on, come here! Ah! Just walking up to random people. Kiss me, you son of a bitch! Ah! Kissing homeless people in the mouth, y'all didn't give a damn. 
I live in an area called Villarica, Georgia, right? So before the pandemic, it was, it was bad, but it wasn't bad, bad when everything was shut down. But I used to go to, me and my buddies, we go to the local Waffle House and everything, right? <laughs> it, that's not the joke. <laughs> All y'all going to first watch and kiss my ass. <laughs> Who knew that saying Waffle House was the punchline of a joke? <laughs> so anyway, I go to Waffle House and it was a server there, right? Black girl, big ass titties, pop, pop, little tiny waist, big ass, bam. Beautiful, right? And she was real nice to me, and she really, I mean, she wanted to hook up with me, right? She wanted to hook up with me. And like, I would order something like orange juice or whatever, and, and she was like, is that all you want is orange juice? And my boys were like, damn, she trying to hook, you, hook up with you. I said, I know, but she's like 25 years old, right? I, I mean, 25 years old. So I was like, man, my daughter's 27. I can't mess with no 25-year-old girl, you know? Because think about it, a 25-year-old cooch? When's the, last, when's the last time you had 25-year-old cooch? <laughs> Think about that. 25-year-old cooch is like, ah! It's so, t ah! Now, don't get me wrong, over 40 cooch is nice. But look at my hand. 25, ah! Over 40. <laughs> Man, she gonna, you know, I put on 17 condoms, she gonna get pregnant, Jay, I can't mess with no 25 year old cooch. Then I tried to do it in my head, I tried to justify, I say, she 25, she got a three year old son and she work at Waffle House. How is this improving my life? <laughs> and my boys looked at me and did like this. Ah! <laughs> but don't get me wrong, man. Older women are off the chain, right? Who's better than better, older man or older woman, who's better? Older woman, that's right, you know why? Because an older woman will tell you what she likes and what she doesn't like right then and there. See you little young girls out there, all y'all doing is making sound effects and stuff when the guy's doing, oh, <laughs> right? Because if the guy's doing something you don't like, you don't tell the guy, no, 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 you tell your girlfriend, right? And then when the girls know that you're going out with that guy, she's oh, she going out with Kevin. He don't know how to suck a titty. That's what the young girls do. But an older woman, an older woman will stop you dead in your tracks if you're doing something she don't like. Like some type of foreplay, like kissing her behind her knee. She be like, hey, 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 hey! What the hell are you doing back there? All the good stuff up here! Get your ass around there before that Bengay burn your eyes. An older woman will pull a chart down on your ass and tell you exactly what she wants you to do. Come on in here, baby. We gonna have relations. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a little bit of this here, and we're gonna do a little bit of that there. Now, if you try to push my leg all behind my head, I'm gonna cut your ass if I catch a cramp, okay? <laughs> That's what happened to me, man. I got down with an older woman when I was 19 years old. She took me to the Bahamas. I came back like this. Now I know how to suck a titty right. <laughs> you know what I miss? You know what I really want to, you know, I, you know what I miss? Dirty, nasty, <laughs> crazy, this dirty sex. Yeah, you know that sex is so dirty and nasty, you don't know whether to call a doctor or the police. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You ever had that sex that's so dirty, you gotta take the sheets off the bed, burn them, take the ashes, put them in a bag, a double bag, a triple bag, then put them in the car, drive them all the way to Naples, put it in a dumpster behind a Wendy's, then push the dumpster down a hill into a lake. I'm talking about that's that dirty, nasty sex. I'm talking about that monkey sex when you wake up in the morning and both of y'all walk in the kitchen butt naked, you know, because he's like, he's like that monkey, you got like bananas all over the bed and everything, and y'all walk in the kitchen butt naked, talking like this. Oh, ah, 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 ah. I miss that. You know, that just. Because ah. you know what's funny? All women think they're good in bed, and guess what? You are not. 
That's right. There's a man in here right now with a woman he loves to death, but she's horrible and bad. Ain't nothing worse than being in bed with a clumsy woman. Hit the head on the bed board. You know, you, she, you try to say something sexy to her, she can't hear you. I love you so much. What do you say? <laughs> Never mind, turn your head around. I'll text you on Tuesday. Don't worry about it. Just... <laughs> There's another question. Does size matter? I'm talking to the guys. Because women talk a bunch of to do, okay? Because you know if a man pulls out some equipment that's too damn big, you be asking that one question while you put your shoes back on. <gasps> what the hell you gonna do with that? <laughs> no, no, Lord. <laughs> Take your ass back to Bradenton. Uh uh, uh uh. Go to the zoo. It's a giraffe waiting for your ass. Go ahead, just. Cause let's be honest, a man with a lot of equipment, that's what they call an Interstate 75 lover. Cause he can only go in two directions. North and South. North and South. Tampa, Sarasota. That's it. But you get a man who's just right, a man who's just right to cover your entire map. He'll get them back roads and avenues and drives and lanes and everything. A man who's just right to be like AAA. Your ass may be broke down, but eventually he gonna find you and give you a jump, okay? And a lot of ladies seem to think what makes a man good in bed is a man who can do it all night long. Kiss my ass. Can't nobody do it all night long. You try to make love all night long, be so damn dry, you try to make love and sparks be coming the hell out. You gotta put a welder's helmet on. All night long, after the fifth time, the penis will be able to stand up. He's like, bye-bye. You can beat me all you want, I ain't coming back. Kiss my ass. All night long? A lesbian can't even go all night long. If she does, she ain't gonna be able to tell your ass about it the next day. Hey girl, what you do last night? Where'd you meet her? Brandon. All right, I'm ready to start the show. <laughs> start the show, start the show. Hello, how are you? I'm talking to you. She, I'm just, you know, just waving at people. She, she can't wait to go home and get on Facebook. Hey, the nigga don't spoke to me from the stage. <laughs> Caught me off guard. He looked at me, and next thing he waved at me, I was scared as hell. I was like, shouldn't he be home in Bradenton? <laughs> These are jokes, see, with the comedy club the jokes. You got it? Good, okay. She ain't getting nothing, she ain't. There you got it. How many kids you guys have together? Uh, two boys and three grandkids. Three? Oh, you guys have been together. You got grandkids, wow. A lot of things you can't do when you have small children. Like a lot of things you can't do, like making love with sound. My wife and I used to be in the bedroom like deaf people. It ain't fair. <laughs> oh, you doing it tonight? <laughs> I'm going to go through the left. Make the wall. Make the That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Why I got to stop, but I got a cramp. <laughs> but I told you the strength before you get in bed. Don't get no attitude. I ain't got no attitude. F you, I'm trying to. <laughs> Cause the reason that happened, cause one day at the breakfast table, my daughter's like this, daddy, daddy, why is your mommy praying so loud last night? What you mean, why mommy prays loud? I kept hearing mommy go, oh God, oh Lord, oh God, Moses. I was like, hey, don't worry about why we were praying. Just know that the prayer was answered, okay? And don't kiss your mother for three weeks. <laughs> I'm proud of my kids, man. My son and my daughter, two amazing people. My son graduated from Florida Atlantic University. He has a degree in mathematics, right? And 
I am on a real quest to find out who his real daddy is. Because I don't know how the hell he graduated with mathematics degree with my genes. Yeah. And, you know, he played basketball overseas and he's like a fitness model. So his body's like, kah, 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 kah. like when I see him, I don't even use words. I go, kah, 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 kah. And he played ball overseas, but he got back before COVID got real bad. He's playing ball in Ireland. He's playing ball in Ireland. And I was real proud of him playing ball in Ireland, but I was kind of nervous because I didn't want him to go over there to Ireland and meet like some Irish chick and come back with some green Negro baby. <laughs> I didn't want to have a grandson be like this. Hello, grandpappy. your grandpappy. <laughs> and I'd be embarrassed to take him place. Shut your little green ass up when we go in here. Or I'd kick your little green ball. Shut your little green ass up. Oh, come on, grandpappy. Let me talk to all your friends. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes are calling. <laughs> My daughter is equally as amazing. She graduated from FAMU, Historical Black College in Tallahassee, Florida. And she got in, like, she got denied three times. Then she got in and graduated second in her class, right? So she's amazing. And my daughter is the thug of the family. She's always been the thug. Even when they were small, they used to go visit my mom. My mom lived in like a little inner city type neighborhood and everything. And then uh, my son would call his mother and I like, Mom, Dad, are you there? Dad, this house is so scary, right? Meanwhile, his sister was on the corner drinking a 40 ounce smoking a joint, okay? <laughs> So while she was in school in Tallahassee, I'm in Atlanta, and she had a little incident happen where she went to like a roadside car wash, and somebody stole some of the stuff out of her car, right? And she called me all upset. I'm in Atlanta. I said, what's wrong? Did that went to this roadside car wash, and they took some of the stuff out the back seat of my car. I said, like, what? I said, did you call the police? Yeah, I called the police, but they take too long to get here. I'm going to handle it myself. I said, you handle it yourself. I'm going to stay on the phone. You going to handle it yourself? I'm going to stay on the phone. She said, go stay on the phone. I said, I'm going to stay on the phone, right? And she's like, OK, I'm handling myself. And she was trying to be real professional, and then the thug just came out, right? She's like, hi, hi, yes. My name is Faith, and um, I was in here about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, that was me. And I noticed that some items were subtracted <laughs> from my vehicle. And I just wanted to bring that to your attention because my goal here was try to help and support a black business. But no, y'all Negroes up here stealing shit, okay? So the next time I come up here, I'm gonna beat somebody's ass, okay? Oh, you gonna look at me? We can do it right now. Boom! <laughs> And I'm on the phone and just go ahead with your thug ass. Go ahead. That's my baby. <laughs> true story. I really shouldn't tell this story because it's brand new, but it's a true story. So my daughter lived in New York, and I went to visit her. I was doing some shows up there. I went to visit her and everything, and, um, and I, I went to her apartment and everything, and I treated her apartment the same way she treated my house. <laughs> I didn't flush the toilet every time. I left one, maybe two in there, in the sink. I don't know, you know. But the best part of the trip was I had never had gummies before. You guys know about gummies? And so I was sitting in the chair. It was early. It was 9 o'clock in the morning. And my daughter was going to work. And I said, hey, tell me about them gummies. She said, I got some in the cabinet. And I said, all right, I'm going to check out the gummies and everything. She said, Dad. Don't eat these like it's candy. I said, I know what I'm doing. Go ahead. I put about five of them in my hand. I'm sitting in the chair like this. Boom! 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 5 30 that evening, I'm in the chair like this. High as a kite. Looking like I'm giving the invisible man a hand job. True story. I didn't feel my feet for three days. <laughs> you know, I'm, their mom and I got divorced, but we're really still good friends and everything. And then, um, there's a lot of things about divorce I knew about, a lot of things I didn't know about. Like, it's some unwritten rules in divorce. Apparently, you can't call your now ex like two weeks after your divorce is final and just say, hey, how you doing? I did not know that. You know, this is uh, call and shoot the shoe. I was like, hey, what's going on? You know what's going on in my life without your ass? Bye, click. <laughs> well, won't be making that phone call again. <laughs> So then I moved to Atlanta. I said, I'm going to try to do this. 
heard about this thing called online dating. So I'm going to try this online dating thing out. And I went up there, and this is what I learned about online dating. People lie their ass off on online dating. And you know what the number one complaint is? They never look like their picture. I went out with a girl, Barack Obama looked more like her picture than she did. I walked in the restaurant, I'm like, Mr. President? The hell you doing? Here? I went out with this one girl, she had these big ass eyes, and she could not control her eyes. I'm talking to her, her eyes going all over the place. I'm like, so how you doing? Hey. How you doing? And I'm looking behind me like somebody coming up behind my ass with a machete. I'm like, is everything okay? Oh yeah, I got these big eyes. I can't control these eyes. Yeah, this ain't gonna work out, baby. This... You looking in the past. I'm trying to find the future. This is not gonna work out. I went out with another girl. She was an alcoholic. How did I know she was an alcoholic? Because she told me right off the rip, I'm an alcoholic. Do you have a problem with that? I'm like, no, that's your thing. That's your thing. And she was not joking. I'm hanging at the girl's house and she said, you want a drink? I said, I don't drink. She said, I'm getting me a drink. And she went and got this big ass, big gulp King Arthur cup and started pouring bourbon in the damn cup. When you are pouring bourbon, you should never hear this sound. I'm like, damn, you gonna drink that tonight? In my mind, I'm like, I can't roll with this chick, but she gonna be asking me for a kidney in six years. <laughs> online dating, man. You know, ladies, if you're single, you're gonna take an online dating profile picture and everything, make sure you clean up your damn house before you take a damn profile picture. I shouldn't see clothes on the bed, toothpaste on the damn mirror, little kids looking through the crack of the door. What are mama doing? <laughs> and they have this thing on online dating where they say, tell people about yourself. Tell them who you are. Tell them your essence. Tell people about yourself. And that's when women lie their ass off. I'm sure guys lie too, but that's not my lane, right? But women lie their ass off. I'm a loving person. I live life at its fullest every day. I'm happy all the time. If you have any drama in your life, just keep on moving because my life is drama free. I love sunsets and sunrises, moon glows and twinkling stars. I love long walks on the beach, long walks in the woods, long walks uptown, long walks downtown. Oh, I I just love walking. I just love life and life loves me. If your ass was that damn good, you would not be single, okay? I want a woman to get it to me straight right off the rip. Hello, my name is Pam, and I'm a very nice person, but sometimes I'm a bitch because it's Tuesday, okay? And if I ask you to do something for me and you don't do it the way I think you should have done it, I'm gonna have an attitude for three damn days, okay? And I might not tell you what it is I want, but I reserve the right to be upset with you if I don't get it, okay? And if you try to get sex with me all the time, you gonna get on my damn nerves, okay? But if you don't try to get sex with me all the time, you gonna get on my damn I'm nerves. I'll be like, that's the girl for me right there. Swipe to the right. <laughs> she said, preach. <laughs> well, I went down to Sarasota. Can I get an amen? See, that's white people, amen. That's white people, amen, right there. Amen, brother. <laughs> I want a black person, amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Mm. <laughs> that's why I love. Well, I guess I'm done. I don't know what I did. There you go. I didn't get it in the right hole yet again. Hey, don't say amen on that one. <laughs> now all of a sudden he comes to life, well that was great. I love watching a black guy look like a fish out of water when the microphone went out. This is a hell of a show. That was wonderful. Now I done been up here 30 minutes telling Joe Teen Lab one time, the mic go out, look at that son of a bitch struggle. Holy oh, damn, this is hilarious. <laughs> Give me another bourbon. And <laughs> hey, you guys are great. Thank you for coming out, all right? Thank you so much. Yeah.